Today I'm just going to give a short summary of my PhD research so far and how the SCN VIP cells control downstream brain regions and their electrophysiological behaviour and what impact that might have on physiology. So I'm supervised by Tim Brown and David Bechtold, who you heard speak earlier this morning. Um, so this needs no introduction for this audience, but we are a highly rhythmic species, and in fact every species on the planet has 24-hour rhythms, circadian rhythms, to optimise their physiology to the time of day. So in mammals, your master clock region, as it's called, is the suprachiasmatic nucleus in your hypothalamus. And this one brain region is crucial for driving the 24-hour rhythms in your physiology. And this, um, this impacts every single physiological system in your body. So you've heard about your heart rate. It also impacts your immune system, your cognitive ability, your muscle strength. There's a huge diversity of systems that are under circadian control. And these systems don't all peak and trough in a um, simultaneous fashion. Your heart rate will be fastest at a different time to your body temperature is highest at a different time to when your muscle strength is greatest. So what we're trying to understand within my PhD research is how the SCN, this one um, nucleus of activity, can control all these different physiological systems that peak at different times of day. Um, so there's two sort of different ways in which this might happen. You can either have one consolidated timing signal, which is interpreted differently by different physiological systems, or you could have multiple distinct timing signals that impact on different physiological systems. So you might have a heart rate signal or an immune system signal. So we're trying to understand how the SCN controls this. So the SCN is a very diverse nucleus in terms of its firing patterns. Different cell types have different firing patterns um, in the way that different um, neurons respond to light input in their output projections and in its neurochemical makeup. Um, so you'll all probably be familiar with the diversity of neuropeptides expressed in the SCN, and this just shows some of them. Um, AVP and VIP are considered two of the mo main, most densely expressed neuropeptides in the SCN. Um, and if we're thinking about how the SCN might control this diverse um, selection of physiological outputs, it's important to consider how the diversity of the SCN neurons themselves might underpin some of that um, output signal. So in my research so far and some of the work that the lab did before I arrived, we focused on SCN VIP cells and how they um, function as a population of neurons within themselves, how they impact, impact downstream brain regions and how they might impact on physiology. So we have a mouse line in which we have um, VIP CRE tagged to channel rhodopsin and these mice have an EYFP tag on them. So the pictures at the bottom just show overexpressed images so you can see the efferent neural terminals um, of the VIP cells. So you can see that they um, terminate in the SPZ, really densely in the subparaventricular zone, but they also send up projections to the paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus um, and some in the ventral thalamus here. Um, so the SCN neuropeptide populations also have diverse efferent projections, um, which we think might underlie some of the ways in which the SCN controls physiological output. So we'll be looking, all the work that I'm talking about for the rest of today is looking at the VIP cells of the SCM. So the first two sets of data that I'm going to present are looking at the electrophysiological behaviour of the SCM VIP neurons and how they control electrophysiological um, responses downstream. So the way that we set up these experiments is we do ex vivo EFIS recordings where you get a 350 micron brain slice from your animals of interest. Um, and you record the electrical activity of these cells for 27 hours. So we've got a full 24-hour period, and then you've got a bit of extra time on the end just to cover yourself. So the mice are the same ones that I was talking about before. So they have channel rhodopsin expressed in the VIP neurons. Um, so that's shown with the EYFP tag in the immuno section. The channel rhodopsin makes, allows us to optogenetically activate these cells so that we can identify them when we're doing our analysis later. Um, and we take the raw recordings of the electrical activity, which are recorded on a multi-electrode array. So this is a six by 10 grid of electrodes that records electrical activity for the duration of our recording. And you can use PCA-based spike sorting to untangle that data and find the electrical activity traces of individual cells across the 27 hour recording. Um, so the optogenetic stimulation is a 10 millisecond blue light flash, and that's delivered for the 27 hours um, 
It's delivered once every minute for the duration of the recording. So in that way, we can identify SCN VIP cells by identifying the cells that respond to the oxygenetic flash. We did two separate recording placements with this experimental setup. The yellow one covers the SCN and the subparaventricular zone, and the red box is slightly further downstream, so it covers um, some of the subparaventricular zone, the PVN, and the ventral thalamus, where we saw those efferent projections in the last slide. Um, so in this way, we're able to characterize the VIP cell profile, and we're also able to see whether or not there's an effect on downstream cells. So as we would expect, there are rhythmic cells in the SCN. Um, the yellow uh, graphs here show SCN VIP cells, and the purple cells show non-VIP cells, so all the other cells located in the SCN region that don't express VIP and don't respond to the optogenetic flash. Just to note that the optogenetic flash um, causes an immediate activation of the SCN VIP cells, and there's work that I haven't shown here that shows that litimate controls that don't have this channel rhodopsin still have the same firing profile. There's no significant difference between them. So the optogenetic stimulation doesn't affect our daily firing profiles for these cells. Um, so as we would expect, both populations show rhythmicity across the day. Um, if you look at the clustering strength of the VIP cells, you see that there's a much greater clustering strength when you've managed to take the SCM population and restrict it down by just one of these characteristics that they have. So we're seeing a much more defined population of cells um, that peak around ZT 6.5. So in the middle of the light phase, they're showing their peak firing activity. Um, okay. So when we do our second recording placement site, you can see that there are a subset of cells that respond with inhibitions to the optogenetic flash. So when you provide the blue light flash here, they respond with these robust inhibitions and that this response lasts for the duration of the recording. So it's a really repeatable response. So we can therefore um, determine that these cells are responding to the SCN cell activation. It causes an, an inhibition in this subset of cells downstream. Um, this is about 10 to 15% of cells that we sample across the region, and they're found throughout the subparaventricular zone, the paraventricular, the PVN, and the ventral thalamus. There was no um, distinct clustering anatomically. They were found spread throughout those regions. Um, Core, our technician, did a pharmacological challenge to find out whether this effect was mediated by VIP signaling or GABAergic signaling. Um, and he found, so the cells that show this inhibitory effect, when you apply bicuculin, a GABA antagonist, this inhi inhibitory effect is completely wiped out. And there was no additional effect from adding a VIP antagonist. So we can determine that this inhibitory effect that we see is a GABAergic mechanism. So the SCN VIP cells are exer exerting inhibitory control over a subset of responsive cells downstream, and this is done using a GABAergic signal. So then if you look at these cells that do respond to the oxygenetic activations, so I'm going to call them VIP in cells, so they're responsive to VIP input. They show rhythmic firing across the course of the experiment. Um, that you also see rhythmic firing in the non-VIP in cells. So this is found at a really similar proportion. About 80% of both groups of cells will show, VI will show rhythmic activity across the day. Um, but if you look at the peak to trough amplitude of the rhythms, so the... Um, the difference between your peak firing and your lowest firing, this is significantly higher when you're looking at the VIP in cells. So this might be because it's a diverse population of cells that we've got that are non-VIP responsive. It's considerably more cells um, as a total proportion because they're relatively rare, these VIP input responsive cells. Um, so we've managed to find individual single cell rhythmic um, cells in the PVN, SPZ, and ventral thalamus. Um, okay. So when you look at the peak firing distribution of these VIP in cells, you can see that there's sort of diverse firing across the circadian day, but there's this relative absence of firing between ZT 3.5 and ZT 11.5. When you look at this compared to chance, um, they're significantly below chance, whereas the non-VIP cells hit the level of chance pretty much bang on. And this is direct, this is occurs at when, a time when SCN VIP cell activity is its highest. So we think that there is an inhibitory um, signal coming from the SCN VIP cells that's causing a decrease in input responsive cells firing downstream. So how does this link back to physiology? So we decided to look at corticosteroid rhythm and whether or not this, um, the VIP cells exerted any control of the, over the corticosteroid rhythm. 
So the top graph here shows our wild type blitamate controls um, that shows the nice corticosterone rhythm peaking just before waking, as we would expect. And we've used dread manipulations to um, and manipulate our VIP neurons to figure out whether or not we can change the corticosterone rhythm in these animals. So we have VIP Cree animals. We do a bilateral AAV injection of your dreads into the SCN. We do it with both activating dreads and inhibiting dreads in our group of animals. So then we test this at three different time points. We do one in the early day, one in the midday, and one in the sort of early evening. And our procedure for this is you take a blood sample from the animals from their tail, you do an IP delivery injection of um, clozapine, you leave them for 90 minutes for the stress of that to dissipate, and you do another blood collection sample um, to measure any effects, any changes in the corticosterone. Uh, so, there was no effect of our injection procedure in the circulating court profile, which is good. It means that we're not inducing um, insane stress on these animals, and the effects that we see in the next slide that I'll show you are not due to the procedure, which is obviously not a very nice one for the animals. Um, and when you uh, inject clozapine, you can see in the GI dread animals, you can see that there is an effect of decreasing VIP cell activity in the middle of the day, which causes an increase in the circulating corticosterone. So we think by reducing SCM VIP cell activity when it's at its highest, we can cause a bounce back of the activity of the responsive cells downstream, which causes an increase in the circulating corticosterone. And our next work now is focusing on validating that pathway, um, completing our immuno, making sure that this effect is really happening in there. Um, so I'm way out of time, so that's our summary, which I've just said. And I want to thank everyone in the lab, especially Lauren and Court who helped me do the work, and then Ed, who's also been really helpful as well. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have time for quick questions. Uh, oh, I couldn't okay. <coughs> understand what your in meant. You had VIP with a... Yeah, in. so that's... We're trying to decide on our naming convention for that. So that's the downstream cells that respond to VIP cell activation. So there is a connection between activating your VIP cells in your SCN and those cells downstream. So that what does in stand for? Input responsive. But if you do IR, then it's like immunoreactive. So I did that for a while, and then my supervisor told me off. And I don't like VIP in cells because of the connotation with in cells, which are horrible. <laughs> no problem. Any more questions? Okay, great. Thank you Thank very you. much, and we'll move on.